Today I'm speaking with Dr. Naeem al Khoury about pediatric non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Dr. al Khoury is board certified in internal medicine and pediatrics and currently serves as a staff physician with Cleveland Clinic's Children's Hospital and Digestive Disease Institute. Dr. al Khoury, perhaps you can start off by explaining what it means to have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and why it's something that should be on the radar for pediatricians. Um, hi, thank you for the introduction. Um, Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is the most common form of chronic liver disease in the United States and other parts of the world. And it means that there is fatty infiltration of the liver. It occurs mostly in the setting of uh, childhood obesity and metabolic syndrome. And some experts suggest that fatty liver disease is the hepatic manifestation of the metabolic syndrome. Uh, so you have fat accumulating in the liver, but that can lead to inflammation and hepatocyte injury, and it can progress even during childhood to liver cirrhosis and the need for liver transplantation. Uh, it is a common problem, and it is a serious problem, and pediatricians should be familiar with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So you mentioned that it's a common problem. How prevalent is it in the community? It is estimated that in the United States about 10% of children may have fatty liver disease. It is more common in Hispanic children and less common in African American children, uh, but it's still a very common problem. Uh, in children uh, aged 15 to 19 years, it can be as prevalent as 17%. Uh, uh, and then in obese children, it can be uh, prevalent as high as 50%. So who should be screened for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease? That's a great question, and there's a lot of debate. Uh, some experts suggest that any child older than uh, three years of age uh, who is obese should be screened for fatty liver disease. Uh, some experts suggest that you check uh, liver enzymes first, and if, if they're elevated, then you should uh, check uh, a liver ultrasound to screen for fatty liver disease. Uh, it is a very common problem, and screening every child can become expensive, but I think it is important to identify these children early on because small changes can go a long way in younger children. So you mentioned a little bit about the screening tests, but what would it really look like to go through the screening and diagnostic process for a child? Uh, so the first screening test will be to check liver enzymes, and we look specifically at AST and ALT, and uh, the most specific one is ALT. If this is elevated, then that can trigger further investigation, usually in the form of liver ultrasound, uh, which can show fatty infiltration of the liver. Uh, and then if this is the case and the liver enzymes are persistently elevated, uh, a specialist may recommend a liver biopsy. So how is uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease typically treated in a child? Uh, so, uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease has a histologic spectrum, so you can progress from what we call simple fatty liver disease, where you just have fat inside the liver cells, uh, and this is usually non-progressive in terms of uh, liver disease, uh, but then you can also have what we call non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, or NASH, and this is where you have fatty liver, but you also have inflammation, hepatocyte injury, and uh, different degrees of uh, fibrosis. And NASH is the progressive form again in terms of uh, liver disease and this is the one that you want to treat aggressively. So if the child has simple fatty liver disease, I think the treatment would be uh, to uh, try to uh, modify their weight and if they're obese or overweight, try to aim uh, for them to become normal weight. Exercise is very important. If they have other signs of metabolic uh, syndrome, then targeting these can be a good strategy. But if the child has non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, the aggressive form of the disease, uh, then we do have some disease-specific therapies, including vitamin E, and this has been studied in a large randomized controlled trial, uh, although the efficacy is uh, around 55%. Uh, metformin has been used with less success, but it is a good option in children with uh, insulin resistance, uh, prediabetes, or type 2 diabetes. Uh, there are uh, clinical trials on, undergoing now in children, including the use of cysteamine, um, and we expect to have more and more trials because this disease is very prevalent and it can progress. So hopefully in the near future we'll have more options. Um, 
some studies looked at the use of omega-3 fatty acids, and I always tell my patients to try to consume a low-fat Mediterranean diet. This might be the best one for fatty liver disease. However, it can be challenging in younger children. So it sounds like this is a you know, disease that's really coming to the forefront and that we need to pay attention to it. So if you had one take-home message for the pediatricians watching this broadcast, what would it be? A screen for fatty liver disease because the prevalence is uh, very high, especially in obese children and adolescents. Uh, it can be as high as 50 to 70 percent. If you're not seeing fatty liver disease in your practice, uh, I guarantee that you're not screening for it. Uh, and by screening, you can identify these children early on, and lifestyle intervention will go a long way. Well, thank you so much, Dr. al for this informative overview of pediatric non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. This has been Dr. Crystal Mercia for Contemporary Pediatrics.